Hi, welcome to another Derek Does. Today, we're doing this. Hi, and welcome back to another Derek Does. Now, today we're gonna to be talking about this 29 series machine. Uh, I haven't done one yet for you. I've had a few of these over the years. Uh, this one is I picked up recently. Uh, if you're new to the channel, uh, please subscribe, like, comment, and I will try to answer everything I can. Again, I'm no expert, but I know a lot of the old machines. Uh, this particular machine, again, like I said, is a 29-2, which is basically the entry model for the 29 series that Singer put out. Uh, this is a very old machine. Uh, this is one of the first Singer machines, really, that they uh, were making industrialized uh, for people to purchase. This machine is uh, what they would call a, uh, a patching machine or a cobbler machine because every cobbler, basically, every shoe manufacturer, like if you're going to get your shoes repaired, uh, they will have a 29-4, which is kind of their common one that they would always get. The 29-2 is kind of like the entry model, and I'll show you kind of the features. It's pretty much a 29-4. Uh, it's just the lesser model of the 29-4. Uh, now this particular model is uh, an old guy. This is the oldest machine I have currently. Uh, serial number dates this to 1895. So that's pretty old. Uh, so this machine, again, like 1895, they haven't changed them. They've made them from uh, probably like the 1870s, 80s in that range, all the way up probably into the 1950s, 60s when Singer kind of stopped making machines. They haven't changed them that much uh, from this machine to like the newer machine. Uh, the big differences are uh, they would have uh, like a 29-70 series would have a much longer arm so you could put a bigger work into it. Uh, some had the shorter like standard like this. Some have uh, the wheel. This would be on a treadle and it would have been originally on a cast iron base and I'll show you what that looks like. All of them came with that and then they would also have, they have these little uh, and I'll show you when I do close-ups. There's little uh, metal pieces here that a wood base would go on. So you would actually have a flat bed if you wanted to, to do anything. This is a top feed machine. Uh, it only has a top. There's no bottom feed on this machine. It has a, it's like a walking foot in a way uh, where, uh, and I'll show you as it, as it goes, how it works. Uh, but the main thing these were made for, again, were for uh, shoe repair. Uh, so you would, if you get a hole in your boot, uh, you could send it to the cobbler. The cobbler would then put a piece of leather, put a little glue around it, and then he would come and he would be able to sew around in a circle uh, with this particular machine. And I'll show you how that works. It's a really cool little thing here that you turn and you can actually sew in any direction uh, just by turning it, which is really cool. So that's why these machines were so popular. Today, uh, shoe, people that are getting back into uh, shoe manufacturing and fixing and that sort of thing will be picking these up. A lot of guys who put patches on jackets and that sort of thing will go to like a show where like a motorcycle show or an air show or something like that where there's guys with patches and you want to put a patch on a jacket this is great you just put your sleeve in there and you can sew the patch on so much easier than using a flatbed machine um, they're pretty heavy uh, the bigger ones are much heavier uh, this guy's got some weight to it because it's all cast iron I mean it was made back in 1895 when everything was it was made to last and obviously this is still sewing today uh, I picked this one up locally uh, this was actually I think from a shoe place at one time and then it got handed down to like relatives and then those relatives got handed down and finally I saw it and I took it um, but I'm gonna show you the differences uh, how to adjust things on these and how to thread something like this because uh, it does take a special tool to thread this uh, this is about the only machine I know that Singer has that has this sort of threading. Um, there might be another one, but uh, as of right this moment that my brain's working, it's this machine. Uh, it's real simple to use. Uh, that's why anyone can use this type of machine. There's no real skill uh, in using it because you're going very slow. You're not going fast. It's not like you're making mass produced anything. You're going slow with this machine, slow and steady. And it's a machine that if you find one, pick one up, uh, particularly if you can find them uh, between like probably like two to 
400 that's a great price above that gets a little high now unless it's a real if it's the fancy ones with the really long arms and they have the big hand crank in the front uh which uh sometimes those can go for nine to a thousand dollars uh just because they're better machines in the in the scheme of everything actually when i'm thinking about this they made these in the 60s too they were gray uh this has been copied a lot uh all the different manufacturers have made a version based on this style machine so what i'll do is i will uh take the uh, camera and i will show you uh, how this works kind of how overall and uh this might be a machine for you or if you see this type of machine you'll know what you're looking at uh it's a 29 series singer all right so here is the machine and i'll show you this is the uh the badge 29-2 uh oddly uh on these earlier ones they put the badge at the top and the singer below and then later they swap those for most machines uh and there's the serial number that will tell you it's 1895. Uh, you can still see the fancy uh what's left of the painted scroll work along here so it's never been repainted it's really nice still plenty of black and like even stuff like this you know there's no reason to put this little decorative thing there but they did because this is 18 1800s where they uh, did stuff like that uh, so here's the machine uh, it has a really big wheel on it as you can see this uh, is grooved here and here and here for different speeds of uh, if you have it on a treadle so you can uh, change it make it go faster slower and even like super slow uh, with the big one like that your little device down here is your uh, bobbin winder. Uh, it's missing, there would be a uh, piece of uh, rubber gasket there uh, that would, uh, the belt would roll against that and then you'd put your bobbin here and it would wind your bobbin just like that as, uh, as you sew uh, to keep it uh, always wound up. You have a uh, place here for your thread uh, this is uh, a little grease pit, a little uh, oil pit or a wax pit even that you would put uh, your grease or oil or something along that. Then you would run your cable line through these holes, uh, actually underneath this here like that. Uh, it go through there to there. That way that uh, whatever uh, thread you have would get picked up with the, the wax or the oil or the grease that would go through the leather easier. That's what these little things are here. If you ever see these, these are mostly for shoes uh, or heavy leather work that you would need something like that. Now to thread it, uh, as you can see, it runs along here. It could run through here if you want to. You can do that, there's no problem. It goes around this little post. This is your tension, it's here. Goes through a little eyelet here, up through the top. And then it goes down through a hole right here and that goes all the way down here and then it pops out down here and then you thread it so that it goes I don't know if you can quite see it kind of changes as um, so from this side towards the machine this is what I was talking about with the uh, you can sew in any direction you just turn this and I'll show you as we sew. It can sew in any direction. Uh, it has a clamp here, kind of like a 111 or 114 W103 type of thing where it pops out and you can change your feet if you want to. Uh, it has a, uh, turn it around. This is your lever to take it up and down. Oddly, you push down to go up. Where like most machines, you would push up. This one, you go down and it raises this whole unit. This is your uh, tension for uh, the actual, uh, you know, pushing down. Uh, now, if you notice, this whole piece is cut out. Uh, that is the difference, really, between the 29-4 and the 29-2. Uh, this was just extra metal that would have been over it, and then it had a little plate there in the 29-4. But in the 29-2, it's all open, skeletonized, really which I kind of like because it's way easier to oil. <laughs> you can see all the parts. You can see your shaft run all the way through there. Then you just have oil points here and here. And then you have an oil point, you know, for your, uh, for this. And if you can go down here, it's just easy to get to. So basically there's a big arm here on a pendulum uh, with a focal point there. And then this goes up and down pushing 
your needle. And these are the little posts I was talking about uh, that your uh, plate would go on to to make this a flush. Now, I don't have that, and it's fine. I don't need it because uh, I'm not doing anything. They even have a little fanciness here. I mean, just a little extra. I mean, there's no reason they did this, but they did. And I love it because they put extra stuff into it. But uh, that's how it's threaded. Now, when you do thread it, you have to get one of these long wires that has a... Uh, let me get to the end here so you can see. The end of the wire, I don't know if we can see there, has a little groove there, a little cut. And basically, you take your thread, you get it in that groove, and then you push it all the way down, and it pushes it through there, and it pops it out down there. So that is how that works. But let me show you how it sews. So we'll spin this around. And what I'll do is, um, let me get a piece of leather, a big piece of leather. Raise her up, put her down, and then, all right, there we go. So here's where the fun part comes. So you can turn this that way now. And watch this. Now we're going that way. But now, let's go this way. Let me cut that little piece off there. That's just the extra thread that we had. So now we're going behind. Now we can go this way. And now we can go this way towards us. Back where we started. All right, so get the needle up. We'll raise the foot a little bit. Wiggle that back and forth a little to release it. Well, if it's going to let us, we're going to have to just cut it. There we go. We'll cut the bottom. And there you go. Look at that. Sewed it there, and sewed it there. And that's all from just one position. So you can do all sorts of stuff. That's why it's great for patches and that sort of thing, or a boot repair, because you can come in and you can just do that, and it just goes like a butter knife through butter. Uh, it's really smooth, uh, considering the age of this machine, which is what? hundred and almost 30 years old is that right yeah it's almost 130 years old and it's it's a pretty sweet machine so I'll do just do a close-up so you can see that too up close it does really good stitches now I've got two different size threads on that one's a underneath it's a, a different type of thread than the top but you get an idea just how easy it is to get one of these and how handy these are to just kind of fix anything you want so here you can see that thing where it actually just spins around and you can just sew whatever you want. Now if you need to change the bobbin, uh, the bobbin is hidden right here. I'll show you that. And to get to it, you push down this button and this slides open like that. And there's your bobbin. And it just pops out and then you need to thread it. It has like a little, little holes in there that you have to pre-thread it. Uh, and so you can change out your bobbin, but if you notice, it has different size holes here. I'll flip that around for you. And this side. See how they're smaller? So you can actually, uh, depending on what needle you're using, you can swap these around. So you got a little one or a big one. So you can go something small or something big. Currently we've got set on the big one because we've got a fatter needle here because we're doing more leather stuff than perhaps, you know, like uh, a cloth jacket or something like that. So when that goes down, you can see all the things moving on it. That piece goes up. That pulls out. It's really clever. Now, let's say you want to change the stitch length. Well, that's easy to do. You come over here. Uh, even though it's not really marked, I don't think. 
you unscrew this thumb screw and then you can adjust this back and forth and adjust the uh, stitch length. That's how you do that. But besides that, it's really simple to use. These are great machines. I really like them. Uh, every time I get one, I, I'm always tempted to sell it because I usually got a great deal on it. But this one I'm going to keep because I think it's going to be pretty handy to have. And it's the lesser model. But it works great and I've got some ideas of some things I want to do with it. So uh, this is it. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Derek Does. Uh, again, I'm always doing different things. It could be sewing machines. It could be cars. It could be denim. It could be jackets. I'm into guy stuff, uh, particularly mechanical stuff. I love this. Uh, if you like this sort of content, please subscribe, comment, like. Uh, let me know if you have one, if you have some issues with it. I can't really like diagnose stuff really that easy uh, over uh, questions uh, unless it's obvious to me. Uh, but if, you, if it is something that might be obvious to me that's not obvious to you, uh, but uh, maybe I can help you out. Uh, I believe you can get pretty much all the parts for this because it's so popular and they probably made a million of these machines literally over the years because it's, you know, it's almost a 80 year period they made these machines. So I uh, hope you enjoyed it and I will see you on the next Derek Does.